Hello, and welcome to the Lanterna Knowledge Network, where we celebrate all things wine, spirit, and gourmet, while educating each other at the same time. Lanterna has decided to introduce the Knowledge Network as a multifaceted approach to generate knowledge and skills for our team, our clients, and others in our industry. My name is Greg and I'll be your host. Today, our topic of discussion will be focused on medicinal cannabis and what makes it such a special and unique breakdown leaf. While Mendocino has a diverse selection of grapes planted throughout the Appalachian, in today's video, we will focus on several factors that make it ideal for growing warm weather varietals. Those factors include sun, soil, and elevation. But first, let's briefly discuss the history of the area as a whole. Hello, I'm Haas Maloney. I'm the winemaker for Brutico Family Vineyards and Bliss Family Vineyards. I'd like to welcome you to Mendocino County, uh, the home of Brutico and Bliss. It's been my home for over four generations, and I'm just here today to kind of tell you a little bit about Mendocino County and about Brutico and Bliss Family Vineyards. The Bruticos have been farming uh, this property for four generations. My grandfather actually helped their grandfather uh, clear the land uh, to plant when he bought it in the 40s. So there's a lot of interconnection with family and it's a wonderful thing to have and a lot of interaction with the other wine families, winery owners and winemakers uh, around the area. Brutico and Bliss own all their own vineyards. So the Brutico Vineyard Estates, there are about 350 acres. Uh, we farm all those ourselves and those are all the grapes that go into our wine. So again, we're a state bottled wine. Going out and looking at the different vineyards and being from Mendocino County, it's a great uh, warm weather, um, a lot of topography from hillsides to rolling valley floors to small rolling hills. So our cab vineyard especially is all uh, rolling hillsides. It's not on any flats at all. The Sauvignon Blanc, on the other hand, is kind of on the valley floor, but still it has rolling hills, undulates, kind of pitched up to the side, has a lot of different soils in it too. So both these vineyards really show a lot of different character. So what people would call flat land somewhere else is really not flat here. It really does undulate a lot. And we have many different soil types. So even within that flatter area, you can still get a lot of different flavors because of that. So just like our Sauvignon Blanc here, one section is a red volcanic loamy soil, which is up a little bit higher. Um, and that's where the Brutico Sauvignon Blanc comes from, a lot more tropical notes, to where the Bliss, which uh, where the field kind of rolls down and back up again into some clay pan and some shale that comes down to that area, that becomes more citrusy, a lot more lemons in it. Um, so that's where you see these bigger differences. The other big influence on our wines is temperature. So we can get up to 100, 105 during the summertime here in stretches, but what's unique about that is that we'll cool right back down to 65 degrees, 60 degrees at night because we're really close to the ocean and we have a wonderful air conditioner that kicks in. So when the inversion of the sun hits the ocean, we get this natural breeze that comes through the valley uh, pass up above Hoplin and it cools us right back down again. Grapes, grape vines are a lot like uh, humans. They like that same temperature range. So what it does is it allows the grapes to hold on to all the fruit and acid that they've been producing by ripening with the heat and don't lose it because that's what happens with heat. With sustained heat, they actually lose a lot of the acids. So that's one of the hallmarks for Mendocino County wines is the fruit. A lot of the times, the fruit that you smell is the fruit that you taste and you don't get that in a lot of other regions. Mendocino County being the northernmost, well, almost the northernmost region of the North Coast uh, area, so you have Mendocino County, Sonopa, and Napa were the original three, and you also have Lake County, which is to the east of us, and then you have Solano County, which is to the southeast of Napa. So those are the, that's the North Coast region for wine varietals. Mendocino County is the northernmost of those, and we have the northernmost growing region, which is up about another 50 to 60 miles north of us. So what you see with this uh, inland Mendocino County is that we have a, a lot of uh, different varietals that we grow. Um, there's Chardonnay, uh, Zinfandel, which loves this type of heat. We have a lot of Italian varietals like Sangiovese, which also loves that heat, and Primitivo, which is a southern Italian grape, 
which really likes it also. But we're able to preserve all that fruit just like a lot of the old world vines do. Um, you can get that great acid and you get that great fruit flavor that goes with it. So that's really the biggest thing about our area. The soils are, are very rich. They're not super deep in a lot of areas unless, unless you're down alongside the river. Brutico and Bliss, 100% family estate vineyards. We love to grow a lot of different varietals. We make a lot of different wines. And again, the beauty about Mendocino County is that there are families working with families, a lot of family owned businesses and a lot of family owned farms and ranches and wineries. So you're working with your friends and your neighbors a lot. Again, my name is Haas Maloney. I'm the winemaker for Brutico Family Vineyards and Bliss Family Vineyards. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch us and hope you learned a little bit about Mendocino County. Thank you, Haas, for sharing your insights. Now, we're going to further discuss this topic with another awesome producer, Hush Vineyards. While the winery itself is located in the Anderson Valley, they do quite a bit of farming in the Inland Vineyards of Mendocino County as well. Here to discuss in greater detail is owner of Hush Vineyards, Zach Robinson. It's a great morning here in Anderson Valley. I'm standing in my favorite field. This is the Knoll Block at Hush Vineyards. This is where some of my favorite Pinot Noir from Anderson Valley comes from. We have the Navarro River right there. We have the Redwoods, Mill Creek right there. Behind me, more Redwoods, we got Lazy Creek. It's a pretty special place. And this is somewhat common in Anderson Valley. There's a lot of really special places. If you haven't heard of Anderson Valley yet, don't feel bad. Turns out we're a pretty small Appalachian. We're only about 3,500 acres. In fact, if you take half of that, you can ignore it. They make mostly sparkling wine. We're left with 1,700. Take out the stuff that is in Pinot Noir, and suddenly what you're left with is there's only about 12, maybe 1,300 acres of Pinot Noir coming from Anderson Valley. That is what we are best known for. And like I say, 1,200 acres, the wines are going to be somewhat rare. Let's put Anderson Valley on the map. Mendocino County, we're on the coastal side. Our little valley is only about 20 miles from the Pacific Ocean. If you want to go to some other Pinot Noir producing areas, we have Sonoma County, about 60 miles to the south. We have Oregon in the Willamette Valley, about 400 miles to our north. What most Pinot Noir regions are looking for for climate is you want something that's cool. Not too cold, but definitely on the cool side. If you can get summer temperatures in, let's say, the mid-80s, not the 90s, but those mid-80s, but consistent sunshine every day and then cold nights, you have found a great climate for growing Pinot Noir. In technical terms, we call that a Winkler, like a warm region one or a cool region two, somewhere on the middle range of those two climate zones. Turns out that's pretty much exactly what we have here in Anderson Valley. The fog is an important part of that. Coming in from the ocean every night, the fog ends the warmth of the day and leads us into a nice cold night. Same thing happens in the morning in reverse, actually. That fog delays the arrival of the sunshine, and then when it finally recedes, we warm up into that mid-80s on average. One of the reasons I chose this block to tell the story of Anderson Valley is because of its historical value. These vines here are the first planting of Pinot Noir in the Anderson Valley. Back in the early 70s, when these vines were first planted, it was unclear whether you could ripen any red grapes in Anderson Valley. It was just too cold. Cabernet had been tried and failed. Zinfandel had been tried and failed. And so Pinot Noir was the next logical choice. Even in the late 70s, early 80s, when we proved you could ripen Pinot Noir, Pinot wasn't that popular yet. So fast forward now, Pinot's doing great in the market. Anderson Valley Pinot's well-renowned. You want to know what makes a farmer smile? Well, you can see it right now. When I came out to the field this morning, said, we're going to get started with some video clips. Here's the first thing I noticed. Come on up close. These are not only our clusters for the coming harvest of Pinot Noir, but you can also see the little white flowers on each one of those little berries. This is our bloom stage. 
And the bloom stage is one of the important stages these berries have to go for as part of their ripening process. It's kind of an exciting day. In fact, I see a lot of things in the field today that make me super excited about the coming harvest. If we look more at this historic grapevine, here's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a nice spread of clusters right here. Not too many. Each cluster has its own space where it can grow, get all the sunlight and get all the airflow that it needs to thrive. We've also got great growth on the shoot tips here. These tendrils, these young leaves that are still growing, those are all signs of a happy grapevine. When we put this all together, I think it's gonna be a delicious glass of wine in 2020. Thank you, Zach. And thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed what you experienced with us, please feel free to share this link and tag us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or LinkedIn. Please also follow our Instagram and Facebook pages for any more updates. Feel free to send us your feedback and share some ideas to the email address lkn at lanternawines.com. Cheers, and thanks again for watching.